Welcome everybody, let's kick it off. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, and tonight, like I, like I said, we're going to look at the traditional side of Drayton. So moving on from where we were with Wiser, we're now going to be looking at the traditional controls. Kicking off with the timing controls. So these are really at the head of your system. If you think about your, your heating system, you've got your time control, then you've got your temperature control, and then after that it's either direct to the boiler, if it's a combi, or it's through a network of motorised valves and to the boiler that way. So programmers and timers can be viewed as the head of the system. And you'll see in front of me, we've got the LPs. You've probably all seen one of those before. There's about 13 million of them installed in the UK. Um, so we'll look at those, but I also want to show you about our mechanical timers. Um, so you may not have seen these before in the past. These are the these are the SMs, so these, these are a popular choice if they want a real basic controller. Um, but the key with all this is they all follow the industry standard backplate. So this is our backplate. Every, every, most of your manufacturers now are using these, but our kit fits all of that. And it's standard wiring as well on the, on the hold. Always, you're always worth checking to see, to, to double check. But on the hold, it's normally industry standard wiring as well. And that brings me on to the... The first principle here, which is the difference between our single channel controllers and our two channel controllers. So single channel, normally called time switches, normally aimed at uh, combi boilers. It doesn't have to be, but generally that's where they, they normally get used. And the key for, for the single channel, and the same with Wiser as well, so the kit one with Wiser is a single channel control, is it's vault free. So if, you, if your boiler manufacturer stipulates that it needs to be vault free switching or if you need to control the voltage that's coming out of the outputs then you would use the single channel controller so in terms of your wiring you have your permanent neutral and live going to your first two terminals to actually give the unit power but the fact that that's mains has got no bearing on the three switching terminals that proceed after that so whatever you bring into terminal one you'll get out on terminals two and three normally open normally closed so if you want to switch mains, you need to remember to put the link in there. So neutral and live to the first two, and then either a link to switch mains or some other voltage to go through the switching contact. So that's, and that's true, it doesn't matter what we're looking at. If it's single channel, that's the, that's the principle there. So if we have a look at the single channel SM, this is, like I say, it's, it's, quite, quite a, it's probably our most basic control really, in so much as you set your time by twiddling the dial on the front, and you've got four tappets, so two ons and two offs throughout the day. Tappet one sets your on period in the morning. Tappet two is the off period. Tappet three, your second on period, which would generally be afternoon. Tappet four would be your off period, so the off period in the evening. So, and then you've got your slider control here. Well, off is pretty self-explanatory. That means nothing ever comes on. Same with 24 hours. That means on all the time, so it's ignoring the clock. But you do have the, the two settings in the middle, which is twice, which means it will follow both of your time periods. So it would be one on and one off, second on, second off. And then you've got the once. Now, the once sometimes confuses customers in so much as they don't understand really which one it's looking at. But what it's essentially doing, if you set it to once, it's ignoring the two periods in the middle. So it will come on at the first on time in the morning. It will ignore tap it two, it will ignore tap it three, and then it will go off at tap it four. So if the customer wants their heating on all day long, rather than going in and changing the schedule, they can set it to once, or indeed setting it to on all the time, because they may forget to turn it off. You can set it to once, and it's just first on and the last off. And again, you'll, that's the same with the LPs. You've got the same option, which is called once, first on, and last off. So not, not really a huge much more to say on those. They do have the advanced button as well, and the principle of advance is it just flips your time period. So if you're in an on period, you press advance, it converts that to an off period and then carries on following the schedule. So you're not making any changes to the timings, you're just flipping that current period. If it's off, you want heating, you don't want to change your timings, press advance, flips that into an on period and it will stay like that until the next time event in the schedule and then it will go back and it will carry on following the schedule. So that's the main principle with that. If we have a look at the two channel equivalent, that's an SM1, I should say. This is an SM2, so two for two channel. It's just got double the amount of controls in terms of your channeling. So it's still the same clock, still the four tap it. So these are 24 hour devices in so much as you program a 24 hour period and every single day will follow the same schedule as what you set there. 
and again you've got your advance for both channels. Now these are set up from the factory to go on to uh, the default position is to connect to a gravity system. So if we think of a, a traditional gravity system where you don't have any motorised valves, you've just got a, a boiler and a cylinder, but there's no controls other than the timer control, you need to have some way of, of firing the boiler as well as running the pump. So the way you wire a gravity system is you have your terminal three goes to your switch live on your boiler and terminal four goes to your pump maybe via a room stat if they've got one. But the principle is, if all you do is liven up the central heating, you're just gonna run the pump and not send any water through, the, or any hot water through the rest of the system. You're just gonna be circulating cold water. So for a gravity system, you need something whereby if you select central heating, it automatically fires the hot water channel, which is the switch live to your boiler. And that's how these are set up out of the factory. So if you've got a gravity system, you just fit it straight away. If you're fitting this to a fully pump system where you've got motorized valves, you need to remove the link out of the back. You'll see there's a little jumper pin across the back there. You just remove that and then that gives you independent control of the channel. So if you select central heating only now, only the central heating relay fires. Whereas if you leave that link in, it'll fire both your relays for a gravity system. So that's how, that's how those are set up. If we now move on to the LP, so again, we've got single channel and we've got two channel variants of the LP. We kick off with the single channel. So this is the LP111, so this is 24 hour period. So this is the closest that you will get to the SM in terms of it's a 24 hour period. Um, so every day would be the same. Uh, but you do get three three options of programming per day. So you can have three ons and three offs. So it gives you a little bit more uh, control. But in terms of its functionality, you've got your advanced buttons still, which toggles the period. These do also have a boost function. So if you press and hold the advanced button, that gets you into the boost menu. So rather than just flipping it to the next timed event in the schedule, you can actually be a bit more precise. So you can go in and choose anything from one to three hours using the boost menu and then that will time out and revert back to its re to where it was before. So that's quite a nice feature. And in terms of moving around, you've got the same thing, off timed once and on. Instead of moving a slider, you use the select button to choose which function you want to look at. And then your yes, uh, set yes and plus buttons are what you use for programming. And the real principle there is you use the set button to step through and pick your menu you use the yes button to select that menu and then once you've selected it you can then use the plus or minus to change the parameters so set moves you through the menus yes selects the menu and then once you've selected it you use plus or minus to change the parameters so that's the, that's a, the the uh, the single channel the 24 hour version we also do a 7 uh, a, a, a 711 I've got the box for it here so that's exactly the same it's just that you can program each day differently if you like so you still need three on and three off throughout the day but you can do each day differently should you wish to so that's the single channel if we move on to the two channel we've, we've got a few more of these in the range now I haven't got one here but there's there's, there's an LP 112 now the 112 again is very much aim towards the gravity uh, installation where your, your timings for your central heating and hot water are tied together because you need them both on together. So the LP112 would be what you would fit if you're fitting, if, if they're replacing an SM2 and they're on a gravity system. So it's 24 hours, you get three arms and three offs like you do with a single channel, but the timings are set together so you can't set your hot water separate to your central heating you can't have separate timings for that you have one timer and they both follow it that's on the lp 112 one of our popular ones is the lp 241 so this is again it's a 24 hour so 241 tells you it's 24 hour but these the timings aren't linked so you can have a separate schedule for your hot water and a separate schedule for your central heating you can set these to gravity mode if you want. So in the back of all of the, L the two channel LPs, you've got this tab like we had in the SMs, but these come set up for pump. So SM comes set up for gravity and you can change it to pumped. The LPs come set up for pumped 
and you can change it to gravity if you want. And like I say, if you change it to gravity, you'll just all you all it means is that when you set if you select central heating on its own, it will automatically fire the hot water channel uh, as well. So two four one, twenty four hours, but you can have independent timings for both channel. We then come on to the five two two. So this is the five day two day. It's probably one of the most popular that we have, and you end up setting uh, Monday to Friday as a block. Saturday and Sunday is a block, and again, it's independent. So you can have independent control of the two, or independent scheduling of both channels, um, but you can do it as a five-day, two-day block. So it gives you a bit more uh, convenience for the weekend. And then the, the last one, which is the one that's sort of the most programming heavy, is the 722, which allows you to go through and, and set each day differently if you want. So these are quite popular in places like town uh, church halls and that, where... They don't necessarily have a, a regular, it, it's not defined uh, every day the same, so they can go in and they can tweak it. Uh, again, you still get three periods, so all of, all of the LPs, you get three ons and three offs. You don't have to use them all, and I'll show you on the demo in a minute how you, how you get rid of them, but that's the main principle there. We also do th these with the service interval, so if you're working for local authority, you can... Um, we, we've, we've got one that does the service interval so you, you and to do that you need to have the lpsi reset tool and this is going to be one of the demos i do at the moment in, in a minute if you ever end up fitting one of these and L, or involved in any way with an lpsi this is this happens to be a 722 si but we do a 522 si as well if you get in, if you ever get involved with one of those you've got to have the lpsi reset key to be able to go in and well set it up to start with but also if you go in to reset it. So you should need to be issued with one of those if you're working with local authority to be able to get in. So that's the that's the service interval for the LPs. And finally, in the LP range, we do the eight, we do a universal, it's, it's called a universal uh, programmer and timer. And these, this is the 811 and the 822. These are, these are sort of new to the lineup. Uh, and you, the, a lot of these come, we, we you can get these out of, uh, Travis Perkins or any of, the, any of the TP groups, you can get them in Wix and places like that. But these are quite nice because they're universal in so much as on the back you've got a set of jumpers where you can define them. So rather than having, say, a 241 or a 522, these are really good for keeping on the van where you don't know what you're going to come up against. And when you get in there, you can define it. So you can define it anything from a 112 where the timings are linked together and it's 24 hour all the way up to a 722 or a 711 depending on whether you're looking at single channel or two channel just by moving the tappets around on the back so they're quite nice to keep, keep on the van to get you out of trouble what i would say is these don't have a holiday mode on so if your color if your customer wants a holiday mode they would need to pick one of the lp range 241s 522 722 something like that the eight the 811 and the 822 don't have as holiday but they are good to keep to get you out of trouble so that's the main range there i would also say across all of these you're limited to two amp current so for most of your heating systems you're going to be absolutely fine you're not going to be drawing more than two amps unless you start getting some significant pumps on there but i have seen particularly the single channel you'll get um customers want to control outside lights or palm palm pumps and things like that it's absolutely fine because it is a timer, but you just got to be mindful of the current. So it's two amps resistive, one amp inductive. So if they want to run a really big motor, then you need to be looking at what the power factor of the motor is. You can't just take it as two amps because it's then reduces to one amp when it's an inductive load. But there's nothing stopping you driving a third party relay, but don't buy a single channel LP and connect it to your immersion heater because you can't do it because the, the, you'll melt it. You're, you're limited to two amps through the through the internal contact so that's really an overview of the lp range as well last one i'm going to show you today is the clip-ins that go into the green star now you can see i've got a bit of a mock-up of a of a green star boiler behind me um which i'll show you take you through the demo how you install these so the, we, the again single channel and two channel this is an lp20 so it's for the two channel the two channel boiler that we've got behind us there uh we, we also do an LP10, which would go into a combi. So um, so those clip in. They go they clip into your Green Star boilers. Anything except the 25 
and the 30. So you can't use them on the 25 or 30, but any others in the Green Star range, you're absolutely fine with. Right, on that note, let me get you over to the training board. I apologise in advance for the noise that this makes, but I'll, let me get the camera over there. Okay, so hopefully you should be able to see an LP522 in front of you. There we go. Let me just tilt that up a bit so you can, uh, it's fully in shot. So this happens to be an LP522 SI, but I'm really just, uh, really just want to take you through some tips here. And it, and it really doesn't matter that it's the SI version. First tip is, if you come to one of these and the customer's been playing around with the programming and they ask you to go in and program it for them, rather than trying to pick through all the dross that's already in there, factory reset them. And the way you factory reset the LP, set and plus, both together, press and hold until the screen goes blank. Then you let go, the screen comes back on, that's no factory reset. So if we go in, and again, like I said before, using the, the set, and the yes to select the menus, we can get in and we can see we're on the default timings here. So this is the timing for central heating, on at 6.30, off at 8.30. You've then got a pair in the middle, which is on at 12, and the next one is off at 12. Now by making them two the same like that, that negates, the, that negates them. So it won't actually do anything. It's on at 12, off at 12. So if you wanna get rid of a period, that's how you delete it. You set them both together. And then you've got your periods in the afternoon, so on at 4.30 and off at 10.30. So that's the, if you use the, the reset on there, the set and the plus, that will get you back to default settings on that. And you can go through and make the changes accordingly. So that's the first demo. Let me get this back to where we were before. So factory reset it, and you can see we're back out on the home screen. Now, I said that this is an LP SI. So the way you set this up, straight out the box, if, if all you do is buy an LP SI of whatever flavor you want, if you, just, if you just install it and power it up, it will behave exactly like a non-SI unit. So if I was to not do anything to this other than leave it there, it's gonna behave completely as a, an LP722. However, the fact is the SI, we can get in and we can set up the service interval. You've got to have this. You've got to have your LP SI reset tool to do this. And the way you do it, first thing is yes and plus. Press it, press them in and hold them in. Or uh, minus and plus because yes and minus are the same button. But keep them held in. And it comes up with this menu here where it says serve, meaning service. Let me just see if I can zoom you in a little bit more on that. There you go. So... You can see here it says service off, so we can change that with the plus button. So that in, that will then enable the service feature. You hit set. Next option is audible alarm. So when it, when it starts getting near to service, do we want it to start making an alarm noise, um, which we can do um, by setting that to on or off. So we'll leave that set to on. Hit set to change the menu, and you can see it's set to 365 there, so that's that's your days, that's the days it's gonna count down from, so most people will leave it for a year, but it's user definable, you can change that should you wish to. And then when you press set again, you get this flashing con. Now this is where it's asking for the LPSI reset tool. So if I just take you out a little bit there. So once you're at this stage where it's flashing con, you need to press and hold and press the button on the LPSI reset tool until con goes solid. So there you go. You can see con is now solid. Sometimes it takes a few goes, but you wanna be hit, you wanna be aiming sort of over the left-hand side of the screen, pressing the button about sort of an inch away. And you can see now it's gone back to being a standard LP722. So as far as the customer's concerned, they can go in and they can set all the scheduling like they would want to, but it's now got the service interval running in the background. And incidentally, even if you factory reset it, the service interval is still running. So you don't need to worry about the customer factory resetting it and uh, knocking out the service interval. So that's now counting down 
for 365 days and it'll start to alert and it'll start to throttle when we get close to, uh, I think it's something like 30 days before the service is due. So it's really there to sort of direct with the customer and sort of make sure that they do get their boiler serviced when they need to. So let me move you away from the LP now and turn you around so you can see the Worcester. Right, so you probably all recognize that as the control panel out of a Worcester boiler. Now you can see it's going mental with the blue light because it's expecting to see the whole boiler attached to it, but it isn't there. So it's well and truly in an, uh, in a, in an alarm condition, but it will work for our purposes here. So thing with these, essentially your LP uh, 20, which we've got here, is gonna sit in the middle there. So as always, safely isolate, off at the fuse spur, and fuse in your pocket. Whip off your boiler cover so that you can you get to this, you, this gets exposed here. So you've got to take the boiler cover off to get to that point. And then there's one single screw here, which holds in this piece of the cover, which just pops off. And then with that gone, you can pull on this tab here and that gets the panel out. So you end up with this panel out and whatever you do, don't throw these away because you'll find that you'll come to a job one day where maybe they're upgrading to wiser or something like that or upgrading to an external control and you want to be able to slot that back in. So definitely keep a hold of that. Now to this, so on the back of, on the, on the back of these, you've got your ribbon cable and it's, uh, it, it's, it's idiot proof in so much as it's, the, the, you've got seven pins so it will only go in one way. So as long as you get the pins the right way around, which is probably where I'm gonna get it wrong now, and you just pop them in. There's some ports on the board. So pop the ribbon cable into there like that. And then it's the reverse of what you had before with removing the cover. So that just clips in there. This cover slides back on to retain it all with the screw and then obviously you would pop your outer cover back on, energize it back up and let me zoom in on the control panel there. In fact, let me see if I can swing you around a little bit. So hopefully you can see there now we've got exactly the same controls as you've got on the on a standard LP. You've got your select button for moving between off timed once and on. And let me just bring that back up for you. And you've got your set and select and to, to move through the menu system. So it's as easy as that. I'm not going to major too much on these because next week when we do the thermostat, you can get these as an RF kit uh, that go into a combi boiler and also a, a system boiler. So I'm not going to major too much on that now because that will be some of the content for next week. So the last thing I'll do is let me just pop you back over. And if you've got any questions, then I'll be more than, I'm more than willing to answer any questions you might have. 